Okay, it's nice to be back in Melli, where we worked together in 1999. It's quite a while ago already. We, we did uh, three seasons here. And it really changed a lot because it's completely overgrown here. But nevertheless, the theatre is still here. So it was um, the third one of the small South Pesidian sites that we worked on. I mean, they are dotted in the towards the Pamphylian end of Pisidia. And they all occupy places from where you could easily get down to, to the Pamphylian uh, plain. Which we can see for the first time today because instead of having the heavy humidity of July and the steam coming up from the valley which clouded the view, um, now we've got a clear autumn afternoon and you can see down to the Pamphylian plain from, Indeed. from the mountains yeah. here. I actually never thought that it was so 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 close by, but uh, it's clearly a Presidian city with a nice small theatre, half mainly rock cut, and all the buildings in Presidian monumental Presidian style, a small agora. Actually, this is one of the really small ones. I think it's only it's even smaller than Ariasos. I think. Yeah, it's smaller than than Ariasos. So and less well defended. We're, it's quite a low hill here, yeah. although it's got good fortification walls around it. Rather steep actually, to get up steep, although we were working with local people who were guiding us everywhere and we were saying like, oh, why on earth did they put these fortification walls on top of such a steep mountains? And he answered, oh, we used to climb them up during the night when we were her herding uh, the, the, the goats here. So there we were. So we would not be able to do it, but they would, of course. So, yeah. And so Meli is sort of small, but perfectly formed Pisidian city. And the only frustrating thing about it is we don't know what it was called in antiquity. Its name in the recent past is Meli, or that's the name of the settlement in this valley here, now renamed Koja Alilev, mm. but neither name gives us a clue, a certain clue, as to what it was called in antiquity. Some people have said it should be the ancient Milias, because the word Milias sounds rather like Meli, but to be honest, Meli and Milias are not very close. And in any case, everything we know about Milias, which is an ancient name, suggests it was further west from here. This is rather too far to the east. So I would just say we don't know what it was called in antiquity. The good thing about Meli is that there is, um, per, I mean, it's comprehensive. I mean, everything is here. There is, uh, like I said before, well-preserved public architecture. But what is, one, what is also important is that a lot of the um, domestic area is well-preserved. So you have the more public architectural area very compact all here. And then see how um, Meli is built on rock art cup, art cup, yeah. art crop. So then there is rock and then behind it you have a exclusively domestic area. So it's very nice to see and we could also trace from the Hellenistic period down to the late antiquity that people were living in these houses. The houses were partially rebuilt and uh, and changed but they were kept up till the till the city was left. That's why they are in such a good, um, so well preserved. And I think that this site was not very much robbed. Uh, so that's why it's all still there. Uh, very little, really reliefs here. That's probably one of the reasons is that the stone is not good enough. But uh, otherwise, it's uh, what you could say an example of a small Pisidian city. I, th I think that Meli, like all the other Pisidian cities, was inhabited from the 4th, 3rd, definitely, century BC. And they probably started developing the public architectural uh, area in the, mainly in the 2nd century before Christ. But then Roman Imperial period and late antiquity and 7th to 8th century AD, the city has been inhabited and afterwards possibly as well but we we just can't grasp that 
it is as if the cities were left then, and most probably, uh, most probably that that was for the majority was the case as well. Maybe there was some very small community that continued, but uh, largely, Meli and the other Palestinian cities were left in in that period. Uh, I mean, seventh, eighth century ID. Wouldn't you would still agree with to that, wouldn't you? Yes, I'd, I'd put the end date slightly earlier. For yeah, really? Most, for the most part. Um, there's very little seventh century material in a city like, in a site like Meli or any of the other sites in Isidia that I've seen. There's a big controversy as to why these ancient cities come to an end somewhere between 550 and 650 or 700 AD, depending where you put the end date. Um, uh, I, I put a great deal of importance on, on the great plague of antiquity which wiped out an enormous percentage of the population in the middle of the 6th century and 540s and the decades after that. But another important explanation is the Persian invasions in the early 7th century which caused a great deal of damage to the major centres. Um, and may also have explained the big downturn. And then, of course, there was further uncertainties with Arab invasions coming from the Mediterranean yeah. in the yeah. in the eighth century, which didn't help matters. Uh -huh. So there's a massive downswing in this in this period. Although it's interesting, well, we've just been learning today that the in Ottoman times, uh, the economy and the population of the area had picked up. To the point that this area around Kodjali Lair, around Meli, was one of the three most important uh, interface points between the plain and the sea coast to the south and the mountain area to the north. Um, and that throws some light on the reason why Meli was in antiquity was an important city yeah. as well. Yes. But on the other hand, Penelisos, which is basically to the east of uh, Meli, on the other side of the Axo River, there we know that the area was basically largely uninhabited and then people were resettled into that area uh, uh, by the Ottomans. So it will have been very different in different locations. So, yeah. But obviously this one, because it was on one of the big routes to the north, picked mm -hmm. up again. Uh, well, what's interesting, one thing to address about Pisidia is that this is a whole mountainous region which we're treating as a as a whole because the settlements in it yeah. are actually quite similar to one another. They're occupied at the same period, they have the same sort of locations on defended hilltops, they have fortifications, they um, generally begin to acquire the feeling of a small city, a, a little urban settlement with public buildings in 150 BC, 200 BC, something like that, and then that continues onwards in a sort of rising yeah. curve, doesn't it, through till at least till 250 AD, but then also with a period on, on going into the Christian period when lots of churches get built. Yes, in, in a city like this, and we, we no more than a couple of hundreds of people will have lived here, uh, in a city like this we identified five churches, five early Christian churches, and not small ones. So this, the area was really very thoroughly Christianized. 